<laughs> yes. Well, usually what we do, Gary, is we start our groups kind of in a popcorn style where we each share a little bit. However, mm -hmm. now that you're here, Jay has been having some snarly physical issues that we were hoping that that your presence can shed a little focus and light on since we've been unable to unstick altogether. So does that seem like an okay plan? Yeah, sure. The, the thing that, wait a minute. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. The um, thing that usually happens when I appear with a group is people have questions for me and so on. So yeah, we can start it off with Jay. Jay and I, Jay and I worked before a bit and Jay, as I recall it, um, you had some noticeable improvements. Did they stay? Uh, yes, because uh, when we talked together, I had what I call panic attacks. Then it, it went down, let's just say, to simple fear. And um, eventually it was like just uh, an uncomfortable feeling or uh, being concerned about things, but not really fear. But the, these last two days, it's again a kind of fear which is rising up again. And uh, it is connected in particular with my heart condition. And um, in a lesser measure to my stomach condition. I'm making now, a note. I, I, I am, yes, I'm trying to notice during the day what even the smallest events that can trigger a kind of fear. For instance, this morning, uh, I, I have a walk each morning for my heart, my heart condition. And uh, this morning I had to walk another direction from the usual because I had to, to buy something for a man whose birthday it was today. And uh, the, the simple fact of having to walk in another direction, which I know pretty well because I live in the neighborhood where I was born. <laughs> so <laughs> I've known it for 70 years. That's no new place, that is no new nothing, but just the idea of changing my morning habit of walking that way and instead having to walk this way, <laughs> uh, mm, it, it was a kind of fear. I know, Helen, you're laughing and I'm laughing as well because it's totally ridiculous, but this is the way I feel. Well, uh, actually, it's, no, it's not ridiculous. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I interrupted you. No, no, go on. Uh, I, it may on the surface sound ridiculous, but to me, everything, all of our ailments, emotional, physical, et cetera, et cetera, have a cause. Something causes them. Okay. And so the only ridiculous thing is we can't find the cause. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but they have a cause. And the fact that I mean, I don't know, the, as I sit here, I don't know the cause, but we can start exploring. So instead of going this way, you go this way. And now because you go this way, you have some kind of fear show up. Uh -huh. um, says there's something about going this way instead of that way that causes the fear. Okay. I mean, at least yes. that's our first clue. Right? Yes. I can also say that, for instance, as soon as I can feel my heartbeat going a bit faster, as, as I can feel my heart pounding a little, uh, I'm in great worry. Uh, as somebody else would say, okay, I've been going up the stairs and my heart is pounding. Uh, no, to me, it's, it's really worry. Although I've had... Uh, 
an electrocardiogram which says my heart is okay. I do have some uh, um, atherosclerosis in my aorta. Uh, I don't know the name in English, the main vessel that goes down from the heart, you know. Well, every, by the way, everybody has that. Yeah, I guess at our age, that's right. Well, it's, it start, I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but it starts around age 15 or something, little bit. Uh -huh. Okay. And it, yes, it, uh, uh, it, it builds over time. And after a while, it just all shuts down and we go, you know. <laughs> uh, I'm somewhat above age 15. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm your yeah. senior too, dear. Okay. <laughs> In fact, my doctors have told me I've had a heart attack. They told me years ago I had a heart attack, although oh. I've never, I've never had one symptom at all, ever, ever, mm. ever, ever. Mm. <laughs> no, what, what I believe also is that as soon as I start worrying, fearing, uh, I have my diaphragm that contracts, and so I have sh I'm short of breath, yeah, okay. and you know, the, the usual stuff, but I just can't control it, uh, well, and I okay. can't find the, okay. the, the reason yeah. for it. Well... We may or may not find that here, but we have a clue or two so we can explore. Okay, so so you go this way instead of that way. That's a clue. Okay, now, now you get the fear going on. Now, let me ask you this. When the fear starts showing up, does it go from zero? What, no, what number do you get to on a zero to 10 scale when the fear shows up, when you go that way? Or that um, one, whatever, whatever way, the new way. Well, about about having to go another way, it's maybe about the four or five. But when my heart starts pounding, or or my stomach having problems, but it's more my heart. There is higher. It's maybe maybe a six or a seven before this meeting started. I was really feeling short of breath and out of balance. Okay. All right. Well, all right. Now, so something happens when you go this way instead of that way. Okay. All right. Now. It, it, it's the, un, um, in a certain sense, it's the unknown because since I had that uh, heart issue, uh, I had never walked that way <laughs> you see okay all right well there, there's another clue now i mean you're saying things and i i just pick up I, I don't know if you guys are picking up clues when she says things uh because she just said when i walk this way it's the it's the unknown even though it's known to you it's not as known as your usual known exactly okay. you got so, it okay so there's there's some newness, some, some difference about there. Some unknown, some do I hear perceived, whether it's at, accurate or not, but perceived anyway, danger. Oh, uh, yes, the danger could be I couldn't manage to walk it all in fear and uh, maybe feel weak and not be able to come back home. That right. could be... Well... Logically speaking, that would be true if you went your, walked your usual way as well. Yes, of course. <laughs> okay. All right. But, see, so that's the difference. You walk a different way, even though it's just walking, and you even, even though you know the territory, somehow or other your system says, uh-oh, unknown, danger, da-da, illogical, yes. Okay? Yes. We don't criticize that. Listen, listen. If we, if everybody behaved according to logic, we would not need therapy. <laughs> That's uh, true. quite true. Yes. It's very true. We, we get a bunch of stuff embedded when we're young and we don't resolve it and it kicks around. It's, it's, it's in our belief system someplace and it just shows up. It's not to be criticized. We just observe it. That's just what happened. So we're doing that now. So we're not criticizing you, dear. We're kissing you out. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, but 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 let's 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 move a second here for a minute. So something about the new direction is an unknown. There is no logical, logically more danger this way than that way. 
Exactly. Okay. All right. So I have to guess now. This is what we do when we explore. Okay. I'm going to guess somewhere in childhood, somewhere, way back in your past, there are unresolved events had to do, had to do with the unknown. Maybe you got surprised about something and something bad happened to you. Maybe you fell and that was a surprise to you. Uh, we have to start guessing and guessing and guessing. But where back there, can, if you can recall, would be a, an unknown and there's a penalty or a... Mm. For, uh, yeah, what, what comes to my mind, I don't know if it fits perfectly, but since it's coming to my mind, it might have some connection. Oh, uh, no kidding. But go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, when my parents divided uh, in order to get divorced, I was 11 at the time. So my right. father walked away from home. Uh, he went to live with his sister, and I stayed home with my mother. I'm a single child, so there were just the two of us. Isn't it wonderful to be a single child, only child? <laughs> I, I, I am too. I didn't have to share anybody's Christmas presents or any of that, okay? <laughs> Sp spoiled terribly. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But let's talk about that for a minute. Okay, so there you are. You're 11 years old. Okay, so so what do you know about anything at age 11? All right, your parents divorce, and I'm I can only think if you're 11 years old, your parents divorce. There is some insecurity in there. There is something. This is bad. This is wrong. This is maybe as some children do. You even perversely think you may have caused it oh no i never thought that because uh my mother had been uh <laughs> teaching me ever since i was a little girl that if her pro if she had problems with her husband it was because of her mother-in-law <laughs> and so when her mother-in-law that is my grandmother when she died my mother was hoping that her couple would have better relationship, but this didn't happen. Right. And so she asked for a divorce. So I knew perfectly well I had nothing to do with the well, situation. All right. That was just simply a guess. It's a, it's a worthwhile guess because many children do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, I will say that even though you gave me a nice logical answer, and it may well, 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 well be true. Yes, yes, yes. Sometimes there's even more kicking around in the background we're not even aware of in these things. So we, I always keep an open mind to that possibility anyway. Okay. All right. So, but we don't know. We're, we're exploring. But what is it? What did that, let me see, how am I ask this question? What did that divorce mean to you about you? About me. I have no idea. I, I know it was uh, emotional to me because it meant uh, every weekend I had to go to stay with my father. And during the school holidays, I had to spend a few weeks living there, uh, which is about, let us say, two kilometers away from here. It was not really far away, but it was another house, another family, another way of living, etc. And uh, this was, I was very li uh, too much close to my mother, dependent on her. And so having, even at age 11, having to leave her to stay, say, for a week with my father was uh, very emotional to me. I remember I would cry, which I never did as a little girl. I never cried. But in those occasions, I did. All right. Do, do you, Jay, see a parallel? I see a parallel. Maybe I want to say, I don't know if you see a parallel. Um, 
between between being dependent on your mother wanting to be where your mother is and having you use the word had to go okay to see your father where you don't have the where you don't have the same dependency the same environment the same security safety, uh, see, say, safety yes okay same safety familiarity whatever you want to call that uh -huh. so between that and walking this way versus walking that way you you knew, your father lived two kilometers away you knew the neighborhood well mm -hmm. but nonetheless nonetheless you had to go from here had to go your words from here to your father holidays weekends and so forth and you were so i'm seeing a discomfort there i'm seeing a an unknown uh maybe fear is or is not the right word but are we on are we on target someplace um yes certainly um the the fact of uh, there are too many things coming to my mind at the same time but uh, first thing I, I was thinking going this way like this morning is the way towards my ex-father's house uh, of course my father died now this is no longer his house but that uh, the way i had oh. to walk this morning was the same way i would have walked to go to his house oh well isn't that interesting okay <laughs> now we don't but, know uh, uh, sorry if i interrupt you uh, there's one another thing that came to my mind uh, wh when i'm always worried about walking etc uh, it's also a worry that something could happen to my heart. And in my father's family, uh, many of them had heart issues. And ever since I was a little girl, I was told not to strain my heart, not to run too much, not to whatever, not to exercise too much, because it would be uh, excessive for my heart. So okay. now when I walk, um, after the event that happened to me some three weeks ago, uh, uh, my husband can tell you, the one you see Tulio on the screen is my husband, okay? He lives in Italy, but he's my husband. And um, the, the first day I walked about 100 meters and Oh, that was enough for me. I came back home and now I managed to walk two kilometers, but it was very slowly. I would never go from 100 meters to two kilometers because oh, it would be panic to me. I have to go very slowly in order to protect my heart. There's no, there's no fear in there, of course. No. <laughs> 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 and, 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 but I want to get to something here. I want to, there's several things in there we can talk about. Okay, but the fear you're speaking of, would I be correct in saying it's an irrational oh, fear? Totally correct. Okay. All right. All right. Well, we need to recognize that. Okay. Now, I'm going to get to a logical thing for a moment. As I told you earlier, I was told by my doctors through some kind of physical exam I took years ago that I had had a heart attack. They didn't even know when, okay? I just, I had one, okay? Now, if I, if I had the same belief about hearts that you were given, that is, oh, don't do too much, don't work your heart too much, you're gonna have, have a problem, a problem, a problem. My guess, maybe I would have a problem today, but what I did instead, because I had a different belief, and that is, you know, you're not going to run off and immediately overdo it, but gradually, gradually build up, build up, build up, build up. Um, my, my doctor thinks, thinks what I have done is created my own bypass naturally, okay? Mm -hmm. um, because I, I do a lot of cardiovascular stuff. I climb hills. I do a lot. I'm 81 today or now, okay? And I, I've been doing this for, you know, well, I've been an athlete for a long time, okay? 
But see, it's a different, it's a different belief. That's what I'm pointing out. It's a different belief. And so you were given this belief. Oh, you've got, you've got heart problems in your family. Oh, look out. You got to do it just this way or you've got a big problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that somehow I'm hearing translates to you got to do it this way and not that way or you've got a problem. You've got to walk this way and not that way. You've, you've got a problem. Mm -hmm. How am I doing? Uh, yes, yes, uh, it makes sense, but uh, it does not wake up some kind of, oh, yes, you're right, you know, <laughs> you are right, logically, you are totally right, and yet, uh, but uh, uh, Teyi would tell you that I have a very strong guard at the gate, He's a very powerful guy, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, and we, and we all do. We all do, you know. Um, that's part of the belief in separation. We've got to deal with this ego that wants to keep us in this belief and give us fears like you have rational or otherwise and so on. Okay. So, again, Jay, we are exploring Mm -hmm. And so what, what we did was we, we took some things that you were saying and we looked at it, explored a little bit, but we seem to be zeroing in on a possibility anyway. Yes? Uh, yes, maybe the thing about my parents' divorce was, was slightly emotional in me. Why the theory on uh, how to keep a healthy heart going this way and not that way does not convey any emotion to me. Well, okay. The, my, my intuition here, and that doesn't make it right, by the way. It doesn't make it right. But my nudging, if you will, from unseen therapists or whatever you want to call it, all right, suggested not not so much the divorce, the, the divorce per se, right? uh -huh. just the divorce. Mm -hmm. It's the doing something other than the familiar. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's, fami it's, it's familiar to have mother and father in the same house. That's familiar. Now, uh -huh. it's, now it's unfamiliar. It's familiar to be with mother, going to your father, having to go to your father is unfamiliar. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, you must do it this way or you're going to have a heart problem is the familiar belief. Uh -huh. Okay. And I'm seeing that translated into anything you do that's out of the familiar ends up with an irrational response. Oh, fear, heart beating. Penny. Yeah, it is true. I am quite linked, um, I would say, to customs, to the past, to old uh, items. You can see behind me, you see those who are my grandparents' items. That's my grandfather on the picture over there. Uh -huh. <laughs> so okay. I, I'm very linked to the past, yes. Okay, all right, well. Uh, let us call it familiar, yes. Well, okay, and, and we, we, we all prefer the familiar. Okay, yeah, sure, sure. Um, but I, you know, I'm hearing an excess response. I mean, it, it's one thing to do the unfamiliar and maybe be uncomfortable or, you know, to some degree. I, everybody, I think, would probably do that to some degree. Something that you're not familiar with, it's a little different. It's one thing to be, have some, let me call it normal concern about doing something a little different. It's the unknown. How do, how do we navigate this kind of thing? Mm -hmm. It's another thing to go over the top or have excess concern about it. I walk a different direction and my heart starts pounding and I feel a bunch of fear. That's excess mm -hmm. to me. Sure. I saw Taya nod her head. Helen, are you, are you nodding your head? 
Are you? Does that make sense to you too, Leo? I'm not sure Tulio can understand you very well because oh, okay. uh, his English is rather poor, okay. so he okay. rather listens to the replays. All right. Well, then let me ask ask Helen. Is this making sense to you, or do you have another oh, other? A lot, lot of sense because I think that um, Jay is somewhat uh, trapped in in a past that she needs to get free okay. from. And well, we all right. A woman. Uh -huh. Okay. So once again, Jay, we may or may not be on the bullseye of the target. Okay. But it seems like there's something there worthwhile addressing. It may or may not, you know, resolve all of this stuff. Okay. Now, I have in mind bringing an unseen therapist, having a session with unseen therapists on this issue. What we seem to be missing, though, is a specific event. We don't, we don't actually have well, to I, have one. I have a specific event, oh. uh, which I recall very well. That is the evening my father came back from work, found the letter from the lawyer saying my mother asked for divorce, and he walked out of the – he went upstairs – Mm, collected some of his stuff and walked out and walked those two kilometers to his sister's house. And uh, my mother was hoping maybe he would have uh, asked for explanation or they could have discussed, etc. But he did not. He did not say a word. He read the letter, walked upstairs, packed his things and walked out of the, of the house. That okay. was it. And well, so my mother went in a crisis, I could say a, a nervous crisis, and she started um, uh, crying and shouting. And I remember it jumping like a frog, you know, she was so, so tense. So uh, she was, no, no, no. And she was jumping like that. And, uh, of course, for a little girl, 11, you know, being left with your mother, your father walks out of the house. Uh, your mother is having a, a kind of a nervous breakdown, a, a crisis. She's shouting and crying and jumping. Uh, I had never seen her that way. My mother was a very quiet person, very, you no, know, no, she was a teacher. She was very, you know, and she completely lost any control. And that was very scary to me. So this is a specific event. All right. The, the thing I was going to ask you about all of that, you answered for me at the very end of it. Because it's not it, your mother's response to crying, the crisis of all of this, your father's response walking out. For all we, all we know, he's saying, hooray, I'm free. I, I, who knows? OK. <laughs> who knows? But, OK. But he's got his he's got his response. Your mother has her response. We don't care about those responses. At least that's not a central issue. The central issue is your response. That's what's important. OK. And you said at the end, scary. I hear fear in that. OK. Yes. When I'm telling you the story, I can feel my. Oh, uh, good, 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 good. OK. Now, <laughs> now that's the next next thing we want to know. Specific event. We need to know a zero to ten. So as you were telling the story and the heart's going to and all of that, uh -huh. give, give yes. me an estimate. As you recall this story, say so you're you're now. Yeah. See what, uh, what, we, what, we, what we. I would say it's a nine. All right, and there's a heart beating in the chest. Um, it's uncomfortable. I can't say it's heart beating. It's all. Uh, it's not normal. <laughs> okay, it's a heart thing. Yeah, you got the right term. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we, 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 we get to be creative every once in a while, you know. <laughs> All right. Um, let me just back up one second. One thing you guys might notice here 
uh, is one of the things I like to do when we're doing therapy of some kind or other is I like to, whenever I can inject humor, <laughs> humor, humor can be therapeutic in and of itself. So I make me, I may make light of something, etc. It's humor also is a form of reframing things. See, it's not so serious. Okay. It's a form of reframing in a way. Okay. So I just, I'm just pointing that out. And, 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 and I can tell you that laughing gives you a kind of contraction, which uh, loosens my heart. Well, yeah. Yeah. no kidding. No kidding. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now, this is what I'm hearing based on all, all we've talked about. Remember, walking this way instead of that way, okay? Um, having a family, mother and a father, 11 years old. This trauma thing goes on. Your mother is crying in crisis. Your father walks out. Now what? Scary. I'm afraid. That's you. That's your response, okay? A nine- when you think about it, remember our sentence for specific events, the moment when what happened, and I currently feel about it. Okay. Yeah. What was most scary for me was being left alone with my with my mother in that particular condition. Okay. All right. Which is an unknown to you. Uh huh. Okay. We're back to unknown. Okay. It's a very unknown. You've never seen that before. The, the quiet teacher all of a sudden oh, scary unknown unknown heart thing da, 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 da. okay again we're exploring but we seem to have something at least we're on the target someplace maybe even the bullseye who knows okay so let's do an unseen therapist thing here for a moment okay and i i will ask the rest of you guys to just join in um become as best you can Jay, um, be a surrogate in her behalf kind of thing. Just sort of go along and we'll see what happens. Now, I'm, I'm, I never know when I do this exactly what I'm going to be saying or doing because I'm oftentimes just guided by unseen therapists. You don't have to always be, especially for a newcomer, you don't have to be guided by all of this and, because we have some cookie cutter ways to go about it, which are very effective, but I'm probably going to do some reframing and whatever shows up here. Okay. So anyway, are you ready? Are you ready, my dear? Yes, I am. All right. So close your eyes, close your eyes, sit back, you know, relax and take a nice, deep, relaxing breath. And, um, just as a way of inviting unseen therapists, simply recall a loving moment somewhere in your past and nod your head whenever you're there. All right, good, good. Just as a little digression here with your eyes still closed. And as a reminder, I know you guys have been around this a while, but I just want to make this point. We do not need to have a Hollywood moment when we recall a loving moment. All we're doing is simply aligning ourselves as best we can with the pure love of the unseen therapist. That's all we are doing here. We don't have that. We're not running around with that level of love ourselves. We're just saying, ah, look, we know you're always guiding us. We're just not listening most of the time. Guard at the gate, ego, all that stuff. Okay. But for now, we're aligning with you as best we can, and we're going to give you a little something, and we're going to pay attention. <laughs> we're going to listen. All right? That's all that is. All right. So shift your focus now, Jay, back to age 11. And there you are. And before this traumatic event happens, you're just... 11 years old, you're doing whatever you do, et cetera. You have a mother, you have a father, you have a familiar set of surroundings, a familiar set of emotional goings on in the world, a familiar set of your mother's emotions being the quiet school teacher type. Okay. And then 
through no fault whatsoever of your own, this occurs. Father comes home, sees the divorce papers, rather calmly goes up and packs his bag, so to speak, and walks out the door. Mother, apparently expecting something else, panics about this. Big time panic, crying, all kinds of things. And to you, Jay, that is scary. It is frightening. What's going to happen to me, maybe? What's going to happen to my mother? What is all of this? And here is all of this emotion about the unknown which has suddenly come upon you. An unknown has suddenly walked right into your lap. You're not familiar. You're not used to this. Who is? Okay. Unknown. 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 So we're going to hand this to the unseen therapist. But what we're going to hand is your response to all of this. The scary, unknown heart thing going on. That's what we're going to respond. We're going to hand it to her. And, you know, she'll so let her speak for a moment. She's saying, she's saying, well, Jay, got it. You're age 11. Yeah. How else could you react? Your world is being torn apart in a way. It's the unknown. Very scary. What's, what's, what's next? What's next? What's next? What's next? Okay. And you're also told at this point that you, know, you better be careful about your heart. You know, your whole family, I mean, the family's had some heart issues. And you really got to be careful. You got to not exercise too much. And here's your heart beating, maybe. Okay. Heart thing. Oh, oh, uh oh. Another clue to something's really wrong here. But you're 11, says Unseen Therapist. You're 11. You don't have the ability to debate any of this. You have, you have no background with which to compare this. It's just all new, very scary, and something you would like to avoid. But it's unresolved. It's unresolved. It still kicks around. When you remember it even today, it's a nine. The hard thing becomes a nine with the intensity and all of that. But it need not be. Here you are decades later and you're still worked up about it. And you would even know logically there's no real reason to be. But there it is anyway, kicking around inside the 11 year old in you. And that 11 year old is still within you. And so on. So this is Gary speaking now. While we use a variety of different metaphors to hand things over to unseen therapists. I'm going to veer a little bit from what's in the book, the one with the unwanted vibration around your heart. We'll just do it a little differently this time. And in front of you, and in your imagination, just imagine a cloud floating in front of you. Oh, maybe two meters wide and two meters deep and two meters high, something like that. It's a dark cloud. And on the, there's a label on the front of it. It says scary. No, it says the unknown is scary. Avoid the unknown. These are the little subtitles. Okay. Avoid the unknown. The unknown is going to cause you problems. Don't go that way. Walk this way where you're familiar. Do the familiar. Do the familiar. What you're doing now is the, when you veer from the familiar, you replay something in your past. We are thinking this scary event. It's irrational, of course. You need not carry it around anymore. But anyway, here's this cloud. It's floating in front of you. Unseen therapist comes next to you. She realizes that if you walk into this cloud, that's the unfamiliar. That is where the, you're going to get the heart thing and all of that. 
That's the unfamiliar. And the stomach problems and the other things, that's the unfamiliar. It's dark. What's in there? Unknown is in there. So, unseen therapist puts her arms around you, walks beside you, and gently the two of you walk toward the cloud. Ah, uh, it's a little scary at first, but there's unseen therapist there. She's letting you know it's just a cloud. Can you not now feel the cool mist of the outer edges of the cloud as you approach it on your face? It doesn't it feels kind of nice, nice, cool, gentle mists, fog-like little moisture. And so you've walked a little bit into the cloud, a few centimeters is all. An unseen therapist says, now this may appear to be very dark to you. After all, it is the unknown. But as we go through this, we're going to shift the unknown into what you know anyway. Just like when you walk one direction instead of the familiar direction, you even know what the new direction is about. You just replay this dark cloud. And so we walk a little bit further into it. And as you walk into it, you'll notice, because Unseen Therapist is helping you with this, that the places you're walking into become, start to become white. They become resolved. It's just a cloud. That's all it is. You have made the dark yourself. It's just a cloud. The dark is in your imagination. So as you go through this cloud, gradually, slowly, the dark starts to turn to white. And you may spend a moment or two looking at this specific event. Oh, oh, this, this scariness I had when my mother was crying and all this specific event that was going on and so on. Well, let's stop a moment. That was your mother's issue. That was your mother's reaction to the unknown. She was expecting a different reaction from your father and didn't get it. This is your mother's reaction. It isn't yours. It is hers. But you're responding to it anyway. So look at, look at your mother now and look at all of this. And with my help, says Unseen Therapist, Let's send your mother some love. Because at this moment, boy, does she ever need it. At least that's how it appears. So you and the unseen therapist, just stop for a moment. Gently look at your mother. Understand the angst she's going through, the turmoil she's going through. And send her some love. Rather than send it, let's share it. Develop love for yourself, love for your mother. Borrow unseen therapist love if you need to. And you're welcome to do that. And share it with your mother. Maybe in your mind's eye, you can see your mother as she receives this love in your imagination. Maybe you can notice her posture change soften, the crying fades, gentleness comes upon her. It's not a fun event for her, but she needs love. So do you at age 11, so do you at your current age, so does everybody. So we generate some love for your mother. And while we're at it, we're gonna generate some love for your father who's now out the door but he's got something going on within him. Let's give him a little love as well. The important part being that you, Jay, are generating the love. You're having love now, hopefully, instead of a scary feeling. Love. Love. 
And so now you walk a little further into the cloud and the whiteness of the cloud is easier to come by. And you think, you think even in, about the event where you take a different avenue on your walk, a different direction. Well, that's part of the dark cloud, but that comes from the past somewhere because there's no real reason for that. But, so even that becomes less scary and the cloud, the dark cloud turns white yet some more. And then now spend a little time, take whatever time you need, Jay, to walk around this cloud, this dark cloud with unseen therapists, as you walk around and see other things that might be unfamiliar, unknown, scary. You could even, you could even visit the family's response to heart issues. Oh, don't exercise. Don't get too worked up. And recognize that's their issue. That's their issue, not yours. And other people's other people's fears, which the 11 year old picks up quite naturally, are their fears. So walk around inside the dark cloud for a while. Notice these things, even things we haven't talked about. And notice that some, it's somebody else's issues, not really yours. You just assumed it as an issue for yourself. Do that, allow the dark cloud to turn to white, walk out the other side of it, look back at the cloud, shrug your shoulders and say, why? Why was I so bothered? As best you can, do that. Take whatever time you want. The others do that in her behalf. And whenever you're, whenever you're ready, open your eyes and we'll talk about it. Okay. So were you able to um, follow along all right? Or, or would you have a bunch of competing thoughts or what? Uh, yeah, I did have a lot of thoughts, uh, two of which I remember because you, you hit the target in so many places that I will have to listen to the replay. Um, but uh, there are two main things. One of them is the fact when you say uh, the dark cloud clouds was created by myself. It is not real. And uh, that is something uh, I know too well. And it gives me a sense of, uh, of uh, how do you say, I'm the culprit. Uh, okay. You're the, it, it, you're, you're the victim. No, no, the culprit. Oh, the culprit. I, I, yeah. I, I made that dark cloud myself. You're the, you're the bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing I wanted to say is, uh, you know, that love I could give to my mother and my father, is, it could flow especially to my mother, to my father. I didn't feel it much. Uh, but this um, made me think of the fact that from the day they, they went apart, um, I was never able to, to give signs of love to, or to feel love for my mother or my father. While before that, I was really just one with my mother and rather attached to my father in a lesser proportion, but still he was, he was a father, no problem, not much interested in me, but you know, I didn't have any conflicts. Okay. Well, I want to do a little testing now. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I, 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 let me be teacher for a minute. Uh, when I do my testing, I don't do it immediately after we have just finished the session because I can get some false res results because they're too close to it. That's why I distracted her and said, were there any competing thoughts? I wanted to get her 
I mean, we're still on the topic and all that, but I wanted to get her thoughts <laughs> away from the immediacy of what we just did. Okay. So that in my, in my experience, that makes our testing perhaps a little more accurate. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the, th the test we'll, we're going to do now is if you would, if you would okay, close, <coughs> close your eyes for me mm -hmm. and go back to this event. There's your mother crying, father walking out the door, the crisis, the da, 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 and your scariness feeling. And tell me if you're still a nine. No, but I'm not about that event. <laughs> Finds it feels strange to say it's disappeared, so I will say it's a one, just not to say it's a zero. But I guess I could say it's a zero. Well, yeah, you're saying a one to be a pain, right? I'm saying a one to what? Just to be difficult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, okay. Now, I am. I am. I am always suspicious. It may well be we have just put this one specific event to bed and all that emanates from it. Okay. Maybe. Okay. But I'm always suspicious. I never, ever want to be fooled by a temporary result. That's why we test. That's why we test. So we're going to do another little test now. If you would, <laughs> again, close your eyes. Mm hmm Revisit it, but this time, literally try to get yourself upset. Exaggerate the sights, the sounds, the feelings. Look for what's not done yet and tell me what happens. Yes, it's a bit more um, the fact that my seeing my father walk away makes me feel frozen, I would say, uh, at the time. Uh, and uh, yes, um, it, it still uh, triggers some emotion. Uh, when I try to make it real bad. Okay. And but, what is and what is the emotion? Scariness or something else? As I said, for my father walking away, it's being frozen. Uh, you know, when you're quite afraid, you are fight or flight or freeze. This was the freeze. And... Um, with my mother, what was the feeling? Um, maybe, yeah, n not feeling safe next to her any longer, as if I had not known her well for 11 years, and that day I discovered what she really was, which is, in a sense, it's true, in a sense, it's not. <laughs> okay, so let this is why testing is, imp is important, because what you did, the primary thing you did when I asked you about that <clears throat> was you didn't bring up the fear you were having as you were watching your mother in her grave. You brought up your father walking out the door. Okay, uh -huh. That's a different. Well, we talked about that. Some. That's not what we aimed at. We aimed at, you know, your response to your mother, the unfamiliarity, the unknown, et cetera. Da, 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 da. Okay. That's what we aimed at. You brought up your father. Okay. That's a new aspect. It's a different aspect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I hadn't thought of it until now when I could feel it making things okay. worse. Well, yeah, but that's, yes, but that's the point of testing. You're always looking for what's not done yet. Most EFTers go, Da, 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 tap, 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 what do they do? Okay. Oh, look at that. And then they think they're done. No, no. You're just many times, maybe you are with that, but many times you're just starting. <laughs> okay. We want to be thorough here. You want to be thorough here. Now you also mentioned in there that now you were looking at your mother 
And this was a unusual thing that your mother was doing. Um, you were you were wording it a little bit differently than we had worded it during mm -hmm. our session. Okay. And I, I'm not remembering all that, but there were differences in it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this. Um, are you, oh, right now, right now, at the moment, is your heart, do you have a heart thing? No. Do you have a stomach thing? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> close your eyes, go back to this event and try to get back both the, either the, either or both the stomach or the heart thing. Do whatever you can to get it back if you, and try it, okay? Yes, I can get it back. <laughs> it's not difficult. <laughs> Okay. All right. Is it back to, you know, as, as heavy as it was? No, it is slightly different, but <laughs> how could I describe that? Uh, now I can feel as if someone were pinching my spine and having the, the result here at my... Mm, here. Uh huh. Well, that's describing the physical thing differently than you you said you you, you, you called it was a heart beating or a heart thing. Now uh -huh. you're talking about pinching the spine. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Those weren't words you used before. Now, mm. again, we explore. We explore. We're always looking for what's not done yet. Okay. Mm hmm. And we don't have time to keep going on, on all of this, but we've kind of opened the door. But to me, the pinching the spine thing is indicative of a, another specific event, probably having to do with unfamiliarity. Yes, I know, I know which one. Oh, well. <laughs> I was at the dentist at age, poo -poo. I don't know. Mm, yes, maybe 10 or 12, around that age again. And uh, it was a very brutal dentist. He was dentist for the army. So you can imagine how delicate he was. And my mother brought me there. And I was so frightened of the session that I got that pinching sensation right. in my okay. back so bad right. that he didn't even treat me that day. He said, you go back home. How many kisses would you like? <laughs> Plenty. <laughs> <laughs> See, what, what you did now is, and this is, this is advanced lesson number four, bouncing off of other events and so on. Mm -hmm. you, shifted, you shifted to a totally different event. That's just not just an aspect, aspect, it's another event, okay? Tomorrow morning, mm -hmm. tomorrow morning when you wake up, let a little time go by, okay, you wake up, you'll want to visit this event, you've now recorded it, so you want to visit it again, okay? And see what's left on this event, not the aspects and the other things that it may be leading to. Mm-hmm. Okay. You mean on the dentist event? No, 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 no. Uh, on, on, on the yeah divorce event. On the, on the divorce event, your mother crying event. Go back to that one. See if it, 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 if there's something left there. Be clear, distinct, distinguish if you can. What's different about that compared to what we actually worked on? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Sure. And. Then we got the dentist thing. Okay, now you may come up with another thing. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 I'm going to guess, although it can always be proven wrong here, but I'm going to guess that the dentist thing also has this unfamiliarity piece of it. Yes, of in, course. <laughs> in, there some, in there someplace, okay? That theme, at least. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe not, maybe not, maybe not, maybe it's some other theme, and off we go, okay? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. 
But the, so, the, the common theme is fear. And uh, when you talk about uh, people's emotions, et cetera, um, I, I've always said my only emotion, my center emotion is fear. Mm-hmm. I know. All right. Well, we've now gotten, this is what I call a good start on the fear. Okay. Mm-hmm. But it is a, a start. There's more to go. I want to ask you something. This particular session, I think would be the recording of this session, would be useful for others to see if you are willing. I think they could learn a lot from it. Oh, it's okay for me. Okay. If, if the others are okay. Are you guys okay? Yes. Okay. Um, so could you send me a copy of it? Happily. Okay. Yes. All right. Anything else you guys want to go over while we're here? I'll just make a comment that while we were uh, in supporting her as uh, with with eyes closed, a and I I was trying very hard to focus on being her and unseen therapist and all. The a fear of mine that has nothing to do with her came up. Uh huh. And and so I I faced that and I said okay. This one needs to be worked on, which I had never thought of that before. All right. So, um, well, that's unseen therapist saying, looky, looky, Helen, looky, looky. <laughs> <laughs> She's good at that. She's well, good at that. It, it, it's something that, that was sh- the, um, in, in probably sixth grade, they showed the uh, uh, pictures of the atom bomb and what happened in the test ground and it blew everything up and there weren't any bodies. It was mannequins, but it, it caused me to want to keep the door to my room open at all times. So I could run past yeah. out and, and I never thought of it as something to deal with. So. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. sure. And, and by the way, that's a very real, <laughs> that's a very realistic fear. Who wants to be around when an atom bomb goes off? Okay. I mean, I mean, it, it's very realistic. It's another thing though, to go over the top and get nervous about it, kicking around under the surface all the time, causing a thing, whatever. Okay. To, to whatever extent it's there. Okay. It was too young an age to be shown something like that. Yeah, sure. Sure. That's sure. all. Sure. But uh, yeah, neat. Okay. What I really liked and took away from this session is how we began with a very global, what is familiar, what is unfamiliar, and how that could be funneled into something that is very, very specific. So we started with the grand scheme, because sometimes Mm -hmm. people do not have any idea what their specific event is. So that was very (laughs) useful to just really take the time to go into that global feeling yeah, yeah. And, and, and narrow it down and trust. Yeah. Trust. That's one of that's one of the skills that are, it just takes practice to learn. That is to take our more global issues and reduce them down to specific events. That just takes practice. Okay. Yeah. But you can almost always do it. What yeah. you know, what does that remind you of is a good question to start <laughs> aiming that direction. Okay. Yeah. But there are other others as well. So, yeah. okay, guys, anything more? Okay. You all rock. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Okay. Well, well, from yeah. California comes a giant hug for all of you, all around the world, apparently. Okay. <laughs> yes. More, Thank more you. Big hug. Yeah. Thanks so Big much, hug. Larry. All right. Yeah. Thank you. And, and send me the recording, please. Will do. All right. Bye. Bye.